uh, uh, Good Times was actually more offensive. You know, I look at this and the, a, a lot of the stuff that they did here. The new norm is almost Disney compared to some of the jokes that they were doing on Good Times. The difference between that is that at least Good Times put some work into it. As do- offensive as they were, they put some. They they tried to put some creativity behind it, and it doesn't come off as incredibly self righteous and pandering to people who aren't even going to f- watch cartoons. Yeah. The same problem that the Good Times show had. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Good Times was offensive, but they put work into it. I got to give them credit for that. The new norm. This is just lazy. <laughs> It looks like we might even reach our gigcaster goal. Congratulations, right there. Hey. that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, and if that happens, then I'm able to actually, uh, I can, I have to say it like this, but I, I, I possibly am able to fund uh, an animator or two, which is what I want to do. I want to thank all the people who are supporters, all the people who came in and showed some love. You know, that's what it's that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support. Really do appreciate that. And if you want to check it out, you can go over to Gigcaster and look at the recent drops, and ours is right there. And uh, like I said, just check it out. I mean, it's not, I'm not, not forcing anybody to do it. If you want to check it out, though, for yourself and see what it's like, then please do. If you do want to support, then, hey, that would be even better. Thank you. You know what? There's so many things that need to be improved in this country. Mm-hmm. So many things that... <sighs> Whether you agree with them or not, these people are saying the right things. I mean, that, that sometimes I just got to agree. Mm-hmm. Put everything and all the bullshit aside and just agree with these people. You know, one of those things, humor, man. Yeah. Make humor great again. Comedy is always yeah. dying. Yeah. Well, how do you say? <laughs> Make humor great again. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, MAGA. Mm-ga. Mm-ga. Make humor great again. Oh, I see. Not MAGA. Mm-ga. <laughs> <laughs> talking like Biden to me. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Dolph. So, you know, thank God we have Elon Musk and his wonderful, wonderful social, social, uh, what do you call it? Social media Network platform. Or, social yeah. media platform X. Mm-hmm. Thank God that we have X here to do just that. Make humor great again. Because, I mean, listen, it has been unfair. Oh, yeah? It has been. The liberals have just (laughs) co-opted humor for so long, man. Just taking it and just ran with it. It's time that the liberals give some humor back and make some of that humor for the conservatives out there. Okay. And that is what we have here with this new, oh, thank God for this. Finally, man. Mm, God. We have <laughs> over here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have over here the show that is definitely bringing humor back and giving some to the conservatives. The new norm. Yuck. See, this is the, yeah, the problem. Yeah, See, yeah this happily. Is, <laughs> you just don't have an open mind. Nope. You know, you think you deserve all the humor. Yeah. No, I, I don't think like that, man. <laughs> humor, you know, I believe in freedom. Okay. And I believe in spreading some of that humor around. And that is what we have hopefully going on here with the new norm. Norm is just your average unhappy white man. He's like you and me if you were old and white. If you were a boomer. He's just your old boomer sitting at home just looking at the world, just change all the things that he doesn't like. Mm-hmm. You know, just change out there. Man, I remember when things used to be simpler. The good days. You know, I remember when them gays knew their place. <laughs> I remember when a dude wouldn't chop his penis off. You know, he was happy to be a man. Yeah, I remember their place. Exactly. The closet. <laughs> uh, exactly. I didn't have to go into the bathroom and see some freak up in there. My beer tasted nice, white, and straight. Mm-hmm. Now these gays done dipped up in there, too. But now you, I think Norm speaks for the true American out there. <laughs> And now he's got his show. So, and thankfully the show's only about five minutes long. Uh, three minutes and 40 three seconds. Minutes. Oh my God, thank you. We don't need another two minutes. Yeah. It's just too good. It was long enough. <laughs> yeah, just too good. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And we'll, at least this is about three minutes. So we'll just be watching this and 
I'm not going to, you know, lie to you. We'll be uh, cutting it back off and on, you know, commenting because I can't even show the whole thing like the, in, in, its, in its form. So we'll, You can't? I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I think it'll be fine. All right. All right, then. Maybe we'll play the whole thing in its entirety and maybe we'll come back and say a few things. Either way, I'm sure you've seen it already yourself. Let's go ahead. If you have, let's watch it again together. And if you haven't, oh, hoo, 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 boy, you went for a <laughs> treat. Comedy. Ooh, have you seen this? I oh, hoo, hoo, boy. <laughs> You in for a treat. I can. I can't oh, wait. He, I want you to break. Yeah, grab those the, the arms of that chair right there. You have to brace yourself for this. <laughs> I'm strapped in. God damn. Do I have a seat belt or something around here to put on you? It's, it's going to make you lose your shit. All right, let's go ahead and watch the new norm. What's that? Boring, offensive. Actually, that is one of my pronouns. Also, they, them, and me. Your. What's with the laugh track? I don't know. I think it's trying to be ironic or something. I'm going to tell you something. A laugh track, automa it automatically makes things less funny. Oh, yeah. If you got to put forced laughter in there, chances are you ain't getting it in the first place. There's a lot of things that they've already done that is yeah. like it's <laughs> trying way well, too hard. Shit is painful at laugh track. I don't know if you, you know, I, I don't know if that's meant to be a joke or not, but it, it doesn't help. Non-binary? How do you know that word? I learned it in school. Charlie, finally, someone normal. For a black guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's another thing, boy. That's a that that's a tactic to blank to bring in the black guy. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Y'all influenced my boy to cut off his junk, but draw the line at beer? He's not able to drink. He's under 21, goddammit. <laughs> what are they even trying to say with that? Oh, you don't get it? <laughs> no, it's going over my head. It's too smart. Tell you what, look at a cloud and just yell. Was, <laughs> you'll get a good idea. <laughs> the whole thing here, make humor great again is the big slogan. And they did, actually. The comments on this thing is hilarious. This, <laughs> I, I spent bet all, they are. I spent all day laughing at this shit, man. Got some good laughs from these people on here. So, I mean, you know, um, you take a win any which way you can, right? People, okay, now I, I don't want you to think that I'm coming at this from some disagreeing liberal angle right here. Just because I might not have the same ideals or thoughts as this main character, Norm, right here. That is not the case, man. In fact, I'm, I'll tell you, I can make a comparison to something else with this show. This show right here, is, it, it suffers the same problems from something else that I complained about kind of on the opposite end of the, of the spectrum here. Because I look at this, this show, and I had to thought about it, I was like, that's it. This is the white version of good times. This is from a fool who stares at his orange juice every morning. It says concentrate on the box. <laughs> who the dummy now? Shit, me for not wearing a condom. It just doesn't have the laugh track on it. That shit is the white version of good times, y'all. And I'm gonna tell you the big difference with that is that, <laughs> again, to show you that I don't have any kind of real bias here. I'm just kind of stating to you some just facts from a creative point of view. Uh, 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 good Times was actually more offensive. You know, I look at this and the, a, a lot of the stuff that they did here, the new norm is almost Disney compared to some of the jokes that they were doing on Good Times. The difference between that is that at least Good Times put some work into it. As and offensive as they were, they put some, they, they tried to put some creativity behind it. And it doesn't come off as incredibly self-righteous and pandering to people who aren't even gonna watch cartoons. The yeah. same problem that the Good Times show had. Yeah, yeah, you know, the Good Times was offensive, but they put work into it. I gotta give them credit for that. The new norm, this is just lazy. This shit is completely lazy. It's literally almost four minutes of an old man complaining. I don't understand all this new stuff. It's stupid and it makes me mad. That's what, it's just what it is. It's all it is. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just, it's just bringing out the, and I'm going to try to help y'all with this a little bit, you conservatives out there. Just, you know, I'm, this is not me trying. I feel bad for y'all so much. I want to help. The thing that's interesting, though, about comedy 
is that when you go to a comedy club, that's where you can really bring people together. Because the truth is, when something's funny, it's funny. And everyone yeah. will laugh at it. This, on the other hand, no. It but doesn't it, hit. But it has a laugh track on it. Didn't you hear it? If you need people <laughs> to laugh to tell you when to laugh, you're not going to laugh, probably. This is going to make it even more cringier to laugh. You know, this, 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 but the problem with this is that it's just bringing out a list of things that conservatives are pissed about and having an old man point at it and say, this is dumb. I don't like it. You know, if I, look, <laughs> I don't need a show for that. If I want to listen to an old man complain to another old man, I'll go to Denny's at 11 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Watch them too. Uh, you know, that's another thing. This is on X. Yeah. Ain't no old boomers listening to X or watching X or on X. I'm talking about the old boomers out there. Ain't no old white man boomer on X looking at anything. If an old white man boomer wants to hear about old man complaining, the other old white boomers complain, they go to Fox. Yeah, the audience that would like this or watch it is watching all their shit on TV. You think a 70-year-old yeah. old man is going to watch this on his phone? F no. Yeah, this dude ain't watching this, this shit on X. They ain't on social media. You know, that's... <laughs> Now, you got some young conservatives that are probably doing it, even middle-aged. But, you know, like I said, old white boomers, they want to hear old other white boomers complain, they go to Fox or some channel like that. They don't go, they ain't going to social media like that. And especially, like you said, not watching it on there. Yeah. And, and that's what I was saying earlier about this is a tactic. I like the way they bring in the black guy. Wearing a red skin shirt. Wearing a red skin shirt. So dated immediately. Two things are being said. First of all, they're saying, well, see, they could be racist too. But what we're doing is not racist. You know, uh, see, we, we can all get along. Blacks and whites can get along and share ideas together. Blacks don't like the queers and trans either. <laughs> you know, so. And hey. they like football, so they're great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. So we do get along. We do have something in common. I'm not racist, even though, you know, the old man calls his ass a n every time he leaves. <laughs> you know, this is, <laughs> this is, this is, uh, again, I'm not attacking this because of any kind of beliefs or politics or anything. This is just on a creative level. This is just bad. I'm not against, hey, conservatives, you can, why would I want to take humor away from you? Why would I want to take the ability to laugh away from you? I don't want I don't want you to be angry than you already are. I have a theory on this. I think that Elon Musk is trying to have his cake and eat it too. As in he's trying to appeal to everybody. He's trying to appeal to the, you know, the Republican base, but then he's like adding in the laugh track, which is something the older generation would like. And at the same time, he's just trying to, you know, give the liberal audience something to laugh at ironically, which this ain't it, man. I will tell you this uh, again. I'm not out to. I'm not out to say conservatives shouldn't have their brand of humor. I'm not out to say that one person owns laughter. You know, I, I like I said, I want to help. I, I I'm trying to sit up here and actually give you some advice, and I'm going to elaborate on that in a little bit. But right now, after what we just seen, I think we'd all use some therapy and better help right now. <laughs> <laughs> People, if there's ever time to come in and talk about our sponsor, BetterHelp, it is right now. Some of y'all need this after what you just saw. This portion of the show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Thing with uh, BetterHelp is that this is online therapy. And a lot of people want to try online therapy right now because they're just not realizing that therapy is not for, well, it is. Therapy is for serious issues, you know, dark thoughts, People who have depression, you know, people, who, you know, who, who are thinking really bad things or considering bad things, need somebody to talk to about that. Yes, yes, very much so. But that's not the only thing it's for. Some people, it's like for watching bad cartoons for one. No, some people need it because they just simply want to organize their minds. They have goals in life. Organizing your mind helps you with that. You know, just sometimes just gives you this nice peace of mind, man. It helps you relax. And therapy, of course, is a good place for that. But online therapy, you'd be surprised. That might be even a better place for you. And BetterHelp is here to accommodate you with that. And to get started, it's very easy. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch that therapist anytime at no additional charge. No one's going to mess with you. Why you want to switch? What they do to you? And nobody's going to tell you that. You'll be just fine. And here's something that's going to give you real peace of mind. Discount with our code right here, 
betterhelp.com slash double toast. You put that in, you get 10% off your first month. Now is the best time to try therapy, especially online therapy is so convenient and it's even more convenient with that code right there. I want to thank BetterHelp for coming in, sponsoring this portion of the show. And I want to thank all of you out there, the Toasties, for your support. All right. I told you I want to help the conservatives out there. I'm not here to hate on anybody. I want everybody to have a nice laugh in life, especially conservatives. Y'all some mad people, boy. You know this. <laughs> I'm not trying to, listen, I ain't trying to talk about you. I'm not sitting up here trying to profile you, but y'all some angry people, man. Yeah, they need it more than everyone else. And yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> but you got to do it right. And that's why I'm here to help. I, get, I got some constructive criticism for you. Uh, here's the thing with uh, conservatives, man. They always, and when it comes to humor, and for a lot of things, actually, not just humor, for a lot of things, you know, they always want to have the conservative alternative. Now, I, I get that because they always say, you know, we, you know, we, we're the blank, blank for conservatives. Mm -hmm. But you're so quick to stick it to the other side that you don't stop to think that sometimes if it makes sense, you're just so quick to put out there and say, gotcha, bitch, or I showed them. Sometimes the things that just that you do are just stupid. That's why I created Conservative Dad's Ultra Right 100% Woke Free Beer. But the last place we want it is in our beer. Your beer that costs $25 for a six pack. Because you can't, first of all, it's about $20 and it has to have shipping and handling because ain't nobody really selling in stores that much. I don't give a f how loyal Blue Collar Joe is, all right? He can be the maggiest of maggots. He can be the reddest of red states. You know, I, he ain't paying $25 for a six pack of off-brand Bud Light. That's ridiculous. That's stupid, all right? That is stupid. Just to stick it to the person <laughs> that doesn't agree with you. That's dumb, all right? It just doesn't make any business sense. At this point, either you're, you're a terrible businessman or you just are you scamming people and you know it because you know some stupid ass people buying anything if you sell it right to them. Conservative humor is worse. You know, y'all are so uptight that sometimes, and you're, again, so angry and want to stick it to somebody else, you forget to actually be funny. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, actually write a joke. Like, I feel like every time we get one of these quote unquote anti woke comedy shows that are leaning to the right, yeah. they're doing the same jokes it's like all right you've made these these jokes now what's episode two gonna be the same shit yeah you know it's it's you know you just you you, you want to prove your point so bad you know yeah. you want to you want to sit up here because that's the thing it's not about the humor all the time it's like i gotta make this political point right here i gotta make this social statement right here that you forget to actually have a sense of humor about yourself you know, you'd be surprised at how a little self-deprecating humor goes a long way. Take yourself way too seriously with that statement you're trying to make. That's why, you know, when you so proudly compare yourself to other things, we're the blank for conservatives out there. Uh, you have no clue what the f*** it's about. You want to be that thing so quick, you forgot to actually research the other thing or understand it again. <laughs> yeah. Comparing themselves to South Park, right? Who was always riding the line and being in the middle of things. Yes. This show calls itself the South Park for conservatives. Get the f*** out of here with that. You ain't seen one episode of South Park if that show is supposed to be the South Park of X. All right. If you, th like, if you think that what you did is an episode of this show right here, then you completely missed the point. Yeah, they just were like, oh, South Park is edgy. We just got to be edgy and f say dumb shit. Yeah, exactly. Wow, man, you are completely wrong. And I'm going to tell you how you're wrong. Thing is, with South Park, South Park makes fun of everything and everyone. Yeah. Shit, people nervously turn on South Park talking about shit. They might be talking about me next. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, I, that's the beauty of the show. You know, be, uh, uh, South Park, their satire is pretty much unbiased. Yeah. I, you know, a lot of people might not agree with that. And yes, everyone has their politics, but mostly if South Park sees the hypocrisy or uh, something as a logic or they see something that's dumb, they are quick to jump on it and make fun of it. Yeah. It's what good satire does. Exactly. South, South Park makes fun of racism, makes fun of homophobia, sexism, religion, politics, politics, uh, you know, but they don't virtue signal. No. Nah. 
you know, they'll they'll make their message by making fun of a black person. And, and <laughs> making by, fun of themselves. Making fun of themselves, making fun of gay people, making, you know, they, they'll, they don't take anything seriously, you know? And, they're, and that's what satire kind of does sometimes. It like, it proves the point by sometimes, you know, ridiculing the thing that they're trying to defend. Mm -hmm. And or at least, not even ridiculing, just having a sense of humor about it and getting laughs out of that too. Yeah, and when they're making a point, it's it's usually about something important. Like take the last South Park special. They're talking about the, the healthcare system. Exactly. Which is totally f***ed up and they made great points about it. And it was funny. Yeah, and you know, uh, you have things that, now I don't think South Park is racist by any means. I don't think they're homophobic. I don't think they're, I don't think that they are sexist. They and a lot of people might call them liberal because of that, uh, but they'll take things that liberals see as a big issue and hold dear, and they'll make fun of that if they think that it's gotten silly. Like diversity, everybody's talking about diversity right now. If South Park, I'm I'm sure that uh, the, the guys that make the show, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. I'm sure that they are all for diversity, but if something is silly and is that that is done with diversity, they will say, you goddamn right, we'll make fun of it. Ah! Ah! I had a dream that I was replaced by a diverse woman. Kathleen Kennedy is not under your bed. Can you check the closet? Eric, enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people didn't, to still, a lot of people don't want to challenge Disney or call Disney out for maybe overdoing it with diversity in the wrong way. It's not about diversity. It's how obvious you've done it as almost like a business move and how it, you put that over good writing. Yeah. And now that I think about it, all the stuff that they tried to say in this The New Norm show, South Park has done it all. Remember the whole thing with the athletes that they did on South yes. Park where they basically had like a women's event and a guy who was Macho Man Randy oh, Savage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not here to talk about my transition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> see, that's, but see, that's another thing with South Park. And that's the difference between South Park and this bullshit right here. Again, this is nothing but a laundry list of conservative complaints and grievances. They just had to put everything in that three minutes. South Park will take one or two topics and do a whole episode around that. Yeah. And why do they take only one or two topics? Because they're not like saying, hey, this thing, I don't like it. No, they're writing an actual story and humor around it. There's a script. Yeah, they're trying to create art and make a statement, not just tell me their racist laundry list. Yeah, exactly. There's other people talking about, well, come on, man. This is the, this is the new All in the Family. You liked that back then. <laughs> Give that me a break. Out here. Now, some of you kids out there saying All in the Family, what the hell is that? That's the show that came out in the 70s. At this point, your grandparents might know the show. I used to watch the show when I was like a little kid, man. And it's, it, you know, you look at the sweet opening of this show right here. If you were to see it for the first time, you wouldn't even know what you're about to get into. Boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Oh, we were the days. And you knew where you were. Yeah! <laughs> I love that part. Uh, man, you looking at those, look at those two sweet old people right there, man. This is going to be a nice show right here. These guys, they remind me of my grandparents. Oh, this is going to be nice. Well, before you sit down with Archie over here, let me just warn you, Archie is a bigot. Archie is a homophobe. Archie is a sexist. Archie and, and loves it, embraces mm -hmm. all that, man. And that's what the show was about. This show came on in CBS in the 70s, and they did things then back on network TV that network TV would be terrified to do today. Oh, yeah. And that is make the racist, homophobe, sexist bigot the protagonist of the show. You know, the thing is, Archie said a lot of things, man, again, that that network wouldn't do because it was highly not PC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, this is, uh, you know, which is why some conservatives loved it back then, because I don't think they really got the point. No, it definitely went over their head. Yeah. And that was the beauty of the show is that not only conservatives loved it, but everyone loved this show. Black people used to love this show. And you're like, what? They watched the show about a racist and they loved it? Yeah, because they weren't offended. Why? Well, some people, maybe they didn't get the satire of the show, but some people understood exactly what was going on with this. Archie was not a hero. The show was never saying that he was right. You know, the humor came from his ignorance. 
and there was in the, the in, there was someone always there to point out his bullshit, man. There was always somewhere there to, to, to call him out. He was never seen as somebody who was the hero of the show or his opinions were right. You call them names like Black Beauties for them. Now that's where I got you, Mr. Liberal. It's nicer than when he called them coons. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That was network television. Wow. That was network television. And here's the thing. Yeah, maybe humor has gotten a little soft when it comes to certain places. Thank God for the internet now. Believe it or not, I'm saying that. But, you know, the, the I love this show because, and a lot of people love this show because it was, they had enough brilliant writing here to show that even though this guy was a was a bigot and a sexist and said a lot of, you know, homophobic, said a lot of just really, you know, just nasty, racist things, they showed that he had a human side too. His ignorance was almost sympathetic. His uh, humanity showed a lot, especially when he was with his wife. And he always got the feeling that if someone was doing something wrong and Archie was really pressed in, in, in a position where he had to speak up, he would probably do the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, even though he was ignorant and didn't like a certain you know, kind of people or you know, or type of people, he would always have this humanity there. So it was a brilliant show. And again, you know, that is something that's missing here. This show is taking itself so seriously. This show is so, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's so stuck and it's moralizing mm -hmm. and trying to prove, you know, everybody else to be dumb. It not, does not have a sense of humor about itself. None of these characters are humanized. These are just political tools right here. Yeah, and the hero of this show, Norm, is not the butt of the joke like Archie Bunker. Yeah, exactly. So don't even try to put this uh, in the same league as All in the Family. They, they, they don't get it, all right? Not at all. If you want to know, I think the closest thing we had to uh, All in the Family is another animated show. Can I guess? It was the inspiration for it, I think. Family Guy, right? No. Oh, okay. No, not at all. No, not all because Family Guy is just, you know, it's just a bunch of crass humor. Yeah. You know, they, they'll make a joke. Uh, but every there's now and definitely and inspiration from All in the Family. Oh, yeah. Family any guy. kind of family sitcom mm -hmm. probably has inspiration from All in the Family. Other, any other kind of family sitcom. I'm talking about. I'm talking about a show that really said awkward things. Said things that probably even people who should hear it didn't want to hear it. But at the same time, it kept in mind to also make those characters self-deprecating about themselves. So now you can read. Now what? Nothing. That's what I thought. You know why? Because we both of us. And that's and that's all we ever gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> God, People, Uncle Ruckus, man, he's the best. Uncle Ruckus is almost a, a, a whole other extreme. He's almost like the new Archie in a way. <laughs> but just way more extreme. That show was doing a lot of things, you know, it's I compared to all the family because it's really pushing, you know, certain words and actions and characters to, and it's uncomfortable. But if you get it, you know, you understand why. Uh, you know, this show's not being racist by having this character on here. It's pointing out how ridiculous racism is to the point where, you know, it affects how even black people see themselves. Yeah, it's doing what good comedy should do, which is hold up a mirror and make you take a look at yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, and again, these characters, all of them, they were never shown as being right all the time. A lot of times these characters had a moment where they were completely wrong. And that's how we learned the lesson because we saw them up. Yeah, most of the characters on Boondocks are kind of shitty. Yeah, no, they are. <laughs> no, they, they, they really are. Riley's a piece of shit, man. <laughs> Criminal. <laughs> but the show challenges viewers, man. Like, no, like a lot of shows that I haven't seen before. Uh, you know, again, the, the characters here on The New Norm, man, they're just political talking points, man. That's all they are. They just they they are flawed. They're just there to look at things that they don't like. And, you know, and they're really just reflecting what the audience doesn't like and just have a moral superior attitude about it. Yeah. And that's what's shitty about this. Uh, now, if you want to see something where they took conservative characters. And I think. Wrote them in more clever ways. Uh, King of the Hill. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, it is brilliant, but by comparison, one of the greatest shows ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. King of the Hill is amazing. That show is so progressive. It, it, it's about a conservative family, but it's so pro progressive and people just die. I think some people, some conservative people just flew it. Went up with their head. Hank oh, Hill yeah. is a very Hank Hill is very conservative. Now I don't know this. They'll be interesting when they bring it back. I always want to know who would make Hank Hill vote for. Did he vote for Trump or not? <laughs> I don't know. But Hank Hill is a very conservative guy. 
Uh, now, some people might not like him because he's not conservative enough. You know, he'd, mm-hmm. uh, he'd probably, man, you mean he, he'll probably sit down and have a beer with a gay person. He'll probably have a gay beer. <laughs> he actually, yeah. they had a, one episode when there was a, a, a trans, uh, a crossdresser actually going to the, to the Hills house. And, and and hang out with Peggy. It was so progressive back in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, a lot of people probably think, well, that show is just, yeah, I, he's not conservative enough. He, Hank, Hank Hill's a rhino, and, or he's he's a fake conservative. Or... Oh, and there was this one episode, he actually went to the gay rodeo. Deep comedy is about having the balls to ask questions. And this new norm shit, they're not asking questions. They're saying, no, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. Now, this show was not, it's, it's, another, it's another show by, oh, what's his name that did Beavis and Butthead? And uh, Keith Mike and Judge. Mike Judge. Another Mike Judge show. And it's called The Good Family. And the irony is apparently it wasn't that good. <laughs> but it lasted for a season. And I think that if you really want to do something where you want to just poke fun of, of, of liberals, you want to go in and just point the finger and laugh at them, again, you got to have some writing. This show didn't have no writing. I haven't even heard of this one. No, nah, they didn't last that long. And Kevin King, actually, I remember this show. Kevin King, he gave me this clip right here. And yeah, it's like, hey, man, you know, there are ways to actually poke. If you just want to point fingers and poke fun of conservatives, they, you still have to have some writing. You can't just point at something and say, hey, that's stupid. You know, and that's what they did with this show right here. You know, they, they made fun of uh, some people saw it as lazy. Some people saw it like, oh, well, you know, uh, they got a point. And you know, they took fun of all the most extreme parts of liberalism and hipsterism and all that kind of stuff. And maybe it's not that good, but it is much better than what they did on this new norm show. And this looks like almost what they what they were trying to achieve or wanted to achieve. You put meat in your meatless chili? Not meat, you pinhead. Chicken. Uh, but, but I haven't eaten meat in 20 years. No king of the hill by no. any means. Mm-mm. But much better than what they did. They the... actually made a joke. Yeah, exactly. There was some writing there. Says us, there was an attempt. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just kind of like, look, look at this punk ass liberal right there. Like if this is what the new norm was, I would have been a little bit impressed. Like, exactly. Yeah, there's exactly. something there. We even had this show called Mr. Burcham. I don't know that one. It was on the, it was on the, the Daily Wire. Oh, and <laughs> another yeah. one of these fake sitcoms. And they put, uh, and it was a show with conservative characters, it was on a conservative channel, the Daily Wire, and they had a gay character on there, and they kind of, you know, we, they kind of make fun of them a little bit. Is this the one with Adam Carolla? I think so. Okay. And even then, even though they were making fun of the gay character on there, one woman called in, or she did a video where she was like, you know, I'm not gonna watch this because don't the gays have enough show? <laughs> <laughs> they gotta cut. They gotta pop up in everything, don't they? Have all, don't they have enough shows out there? I will not. As a Christian, I will not be watching this. It, God. It, you know, so, see that's the problem. Some of y'all are like, listen, you trying to tell me how to do humor? And I don't want no humor. Just give me the pure, unadulterated homophobia and racism yeah. and sexism. I don't need to laugh. And just give me something to be mad about. I don't want all that funny shit. It's gonna be queer. Tell me it's queer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You just, you know, you just watering it down with all this humor and shit. No, just give me the pure shit. That, give me that race. Oh, oh, that's the racism I'm talking about right there. <laughs> that's that raw gay yeah, that, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really hate the gays now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, I got to go play golf. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Listen, I, I hope that helped a little bit. I, I, I want y'all to have your gay blank. Uh, your, your gay, no, they, they have enough gays out there. I want you to have your conservative blank, blank, blank. Yeah, just uh, you know, hire some real writers, Elon Musk. There's a lot of you hanging out with Joe Rogan. I bet if you showed that to Joe Rogan, he would have been like, "Yeah, don't release this," because he knows oh. comedy. At the like, say what you will about Joe Rogan. I'm not the biggest fan of him, like I used to be back in the day. But that guy is a stand-up comedian. He's been in the circles, and he knows what's funny. Well, if he does, he didn't tell Elon Musk. No, he did not. Because <laughs> Elon Musk came out this shit anyway. And that's another thing. I'm talking about that, like they bring in Elon Musk and they don't even, uh, Elon Musk, and they don't even make a joke about it. They just no. bring him in talking about, yeah, the greatest guy in the world. Nice Maryland, thank God we're
Look at that. He's and a hero. He I put bet, that X up there. Yeah, I bet he saw that as a callback joke because ever there was all that controversy of him changing it to X and like it being a lame ass X, you know, that he stole from someone else. Yeah. All right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that was the reason he changed it? I didn't get it. So I'm like, okay, what's the joke about that? Yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. They guess, hey, you know what? You're not alone. They don't get it either. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why he change the X? Like, I don't I guess. Yeah. And, and the audience they're trying to appeal to, like, they're not going to understand what a shit posting meme is. And that's what the song was singing. It's like, who is this for, Elon? Yeah. Yeah, he just answered it. It's for Elon. <laughs> <laughs> he's, having a, he's having a blast with this. You all guys. Getting all his ha ha's on with this. Oh, uh, hey, people. I don't know. You know what? As they say, hey, give it a chance. Maybe next episode. Yeah, notice how he didn't talk. He has a reputation for being crazy when he goes into the booth. Oh, fuck yeah. That's maybe the next episode he will talk. <laughs> maybe he'll be the funniest character on there. Maybe we'll get some real humor in there. Now, that would be funny. You get an AI Elon to do him, yeah. but oh, I'm not going to give you my oh, tricks. Bring mm -hmm. the real Elon up in there. Let his ass go crazy all in that booth. Ah, well, there we go, y'all. Hey, next episode, right? We'll wait for that. Well, you made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like what we do. So if you do, check out these other videos just like this one. Check out our other YouTube channels and subscribe to join our wonderful Toasty community. And as always, stay toasty.